Hello everyone, my name is Ali and today I'm going to present our paper titled 3Chain, a lightweight consensus algorithm for IoT-based blockchains. Internet of Things has received tremendous attention in recent years, as you can see from the diagram, the number of um, installed IoT devices or active IoT devices is growing uh, significantly over the years. Uh, the current existing IoT ecosystems rely on a uh, three-year architecture where the low-powered IoT devices are uh, connected through a gateway to the cloud storage or to the cloud service providers where they receive services. Uh, basically, the gateway is there to handle the resource-consuming tasks for the uh, low-powered IoT devices as they have like limited resources available. However, uh, the existing um, IoT ecosystems suffers from a number of challenges, including uh, the centralization. Uh, basically, this centralization wouldn't scale if we consider the IoT network with millions of users and uh, millions of um, devices, technically. Uh, so then, then even if two devices are sitting next to each other, they have to be communicate and they have to communicate through that central controller, which technically wouldn't be scalable. So most of the IoT devices come with uh, very limited or even no security safeguards and that makes security a very critical challenge in IoT and then these devices uh, technically they collect um, sort of privacy sensitive information about our daily lives and uh, so they share this information with the service provider. So then the, tech, uh, the service provider can build a virtual profile about the user which, which, which compromises the user's privacy. So the users um, don't have or uh, have a very limited uh, control over their, their data. So the data sits with the service provider. So you, you don't have basically a control over what processing is happening on the data. Or um, in some cases, you can remove information, but mainly they, they just uh, you just don't have access to, to the data itself. Blockchain can be a potential solution to these challenges because of its salient features, uh, which includes like distributed management of the ledger, where all the participants um, so try to um, manage the system without relying on a central controller, the immutability of the blockchain, auditability, traceability, um, distributed trust and anonymity. I mean, because of the type of the venue, I, I, I presume that everyone is, uh, I mean, very well, um, familiar with the blockchain concept, so I'll skip this. Um, however, uh, applying blockchain in IoT is not straightforward and it involves uh, significant challenges. Um, in this paper, we basically focus only on the challenges related to uh, the consensus algorithm. So the, the existing consensus algorithms suffer from limited throughput. And um, so while IoT based uh, blockchains demand throughput management, uh, blockchains with, with the ability for throughput management, basically with throughput management, we mean that not only they have to have high throughput basically, but they only need to be able to adjust the throughput based on the load. Because um, as the time passes, the new IoT devices will emerge, new services will emerge and the, so, Basically, the number of the number of transactions in the blockchain network will increase. So then, we'll demand a network which can handle all these transactions as the number of transactions will increase. So most of the existing consensus algorithm, um, multiple uh, validators simultaneously work on a single uh, block, and the one that uh, solves or follows the consensus algorithm first will be able to commit that block into the blockchain. I mean, however, this is not um, efficient in terms of the resources because uh, the resources spent by the other validators will technically be wasted uh, as they wouldn't receive any uh, sort of uh, incentive and technically just one of them would be able to store the, trend, uh, the block into the blockchain. Storing or committing blocks into the blockchain involves a delay while most of the IoT applications demand real-time transaction settlement which is, um, I mean, for instance, in Bitcoin can take up to 30 minutes, which is far beyond the capability and tolerance level of IoT. In IoT, you might require to frequently retrieve transactions uh, which are stored in the past. Um, that can be for verification of the data or any other use case. And it is more frequent than cryptocurrencies. So then uh, it is important to consider the overheads and like computational and the delay associated with retrieving the transactions. 
And also the resources demanded it, uh, by the consensus algorithm to ensure that actually the network will achieve a uh, consensus and they can actually manage the system. So here in this talk, we'll by blockchain, we basically mention, uh, we basically mean the public blockchain and how the consensus algorithm will be applicable in both public and private settings. So we propose three chain as a solution to the aforementioned and to the aforementioned challenges. Uh, three chain, as can be seen in the figure, embraces the uh, having forks, or basically uh, it has multiple parallel ledgers, which uh, are managed by different uh, validators in the network. Um, and as you as you can see here in the figure, so we 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 have different uh, ledgers uh, working parallel. Going through some basic concepts, 3Chain is technically a validator selection algorithm. So meaning that um, the, the participating nodes will can select a validator and that validator will um, sort of generate or commit blocks into the blockchains. So the validators, um, each of the validators uh, has a particular pattern or would be allocated to a particular pattern in a random manner uh, and then based on the pattern that has uh, been allocated to the validators they collect transactions that fall within that pattern and then commit them into the blockchain so that means we distribute the patterns randomly among the validators and then each validator commits the transaction that fall within its corresponding pattern so all the nodes will have consistency over uh, the pattern so that means they know who would be the validator of any transaction in the network so this basically eliminates the need for the longest ledger concept. So the longest ledger actually is a concept in conventional blockchains. Well, we want to make sure that actually the consistency of the state of the blockchain can be achieved over time. Uh, but then to reach and eliminates that and it achieves a near real time uh, consistency because all the nodes know who would be the validator of a particular transaction. If you look at this uh, explanation, you will see a pattern emerging uh, and then basically all the consensus depends on how we define this pattern and the level of randomness and unpredictability, unpredictability of uh, these patterns. So in tree chain, we use hash functions for these patterns, which I'm briefly mentioning that here. So the hash functions, is um, probably everyone knows, is the function that receives an uh, input with any size and it will output a fixed size uh, sort of uh, output or a string basically the the hash function is random um, so even if you change one bit of the input the the output would be completely randomized uh, and it is unpredictable so it, you cannot predict what would be the hash of a particular message and um, hash functions are already implemented in all the existing blockchains, so we're not introducing anything new to the blockchain systems. Okay, so some basic concepts of 3Chain. Um, in 3Chain, we are defining a consensus code range. So technically, the consensus code range is the same, uh, is referring back to the same pattern that we have discussed. So if you recall in the previous slides, we said that the validators are uh, allocated to particular patterns and then depending uh, on the pattern, they collect transactions. So that pattern, we call it the consensus code range, which is uh, basically the consensus code range is the most significant character of the hash function output. So for instance, here in, the, in this hash, so you can see the hash output is alpha bound to alpha k and k is basically the size of the hash function output. So the CCR can be one, um, and then it would be only referred to alpha one in, in the hash function output, or it can be two, which will refer to alpha one and alpha two. So we are defining a weight dictionary. So the weight dictionary defines the weight corresponding to each value in the hash function output. So in the hash function output, so we have, uh, it can be either numbers or alphabets, right? So for each of these values, we are defining a weight which is unique for the value uh, and that has been defined in the weight dictionary. Additionally, we are defining a key weight metric uh, or a KWM, which is the cumulative weight of each uh, public key hash technically. So that means for instance here, a node with ID 12 is public key hash is this value 
and then for, we calculate the kwm basically by uh, adding the value or the weight corresponding to each of the letters in in the public key hash so for instance here um the weight for a is 37 and um, we're adding that with the rest of the weights uh, and then calculating the kwm so I'll, I'll explain how we will distribute the consensus code range later so three chain involves uh, three main steps um, basically validator selection block generation and validator reformation that i'll explain in the rest of the presentation so the main objective of the validator selection uh, part is to distribute the ccrs or the patterns among the potential validators so that means we want to say who would be responsible for which pattern so it involves uh, four different steps um, or subtasks basically uh, the first one is to announce um, announce the validators so any node in the network who is interested to be a validator will, will broadcast a validator interest transaction that it has the transaction id the public key and the signature and um, technically the public key should be verifiable through a certificate authority to prevent cyber attacks uh, so the point here is that all the nodes should be uh, synchronized in a way that they will do this within a particular time period so then that means we not always are accepting the validator interest but just within a particular time windows that the network is defining so the, the nodes will broadcast this and then they follow the rest of the algorithms so once they broadcast at the end of the period the nodes each of the participating nodes will calculate um, a kwm so we have already explained how the kwm can be calculated and that's based on the public key of the uh, public key in each of the validator interest transactions once the kwm has been calculated uh, each of the each of the nodes will form a descending list based on the kwm and then it will distribute the ccrs based on the list in a way that the the node with the highest kwm would be allocated to the first um basically consensus code range so but uh what would be the size of the consensus code range is basically depends on the how many nodes we have in the network or better to say how many validators we have in the network um, each character in the hash function output can accommodate 62 values so we can say for instance uh, if it, the value of the validator is less than 62 then uh, it should be one uh, if it's higher it should be two and so on and so forth so that's the way how we define the number of uh, ccrs the next step is that um, each validator will broadcast its own CCR and the total number of validators from its perspective to the rest of the network and um, any inconsistency will be resolved following 66% of the majority of the validators. So here the main aim is to all the validators to agree on who would be responsible for what CCR. Finally. Um, the validator with the highest KWM will generate a, a genesis block. Uh, as you can see here in tree chain, we basically have multiple genesis blocks. At the end of each epoch times, we reconfigure the network and then uh, a new genesis block will be recorded. And the genesis block actually contains um, the CCRs, uh, the CCR allocations and the public key of the nodes for the next actually period of time. And in this way, they, the, all, the, all the nodes can verify if uh, a transaction is within a, uh, a particular, uh, the CCR of a particular validator. So once the CCRs are <laughs> distributed, uh, each of the validators will technically collect the transaction that fall within the CCR and then commit them into the blockchain. So this is basically they don't need to follow any other uh, um, algorithm. So that means that they would be quite fast. And then the upper bound throughput is the speed in which the nodes can verify transaction and form a new block, which technically this is just uh, creating a hash and signing the hash. So that means three chain can achieve like a very fast uh, transaction throughput. Um, and also the way that the, the, the validators can generate a block, uh, I mean, it, can, it depends on the network. It can be either based on the block size 
um, say that once the size of the blocks or the pending transactions reached a particular threshold, then they generate a new block or based on a particular time intervals. So that can be defined based on the network settings and things like that. And the last step is to um, is the validator reformation. Basically, this means that um, at the end of each uh, time periods or epoch times, we will reformat the network. Um, all the validators have to change their public key so that we make sure that the CCRs will be randomized and redistributed. Uh, hopefully, the, uh, all the nodes will receive a new uh, sort of CCR, and that that's actually the network will make sure that it will happen. Uh, and, I, and it also allows the new nodes or the new validators to join the network. So in summary, um, tree chain is a leader selection consensus algorithm. A leader is selected and it's valid for the, that period of time. It, it connect, uh, collects transactions uh, and the two levels of randomizations are introduced um, in the transaction level. As you can see here, the hash of a transaction output is random. You don't know what would be the hash of the transaction output and that will define who would be the validator of the transaction and also the CCRs are randomly allocated which is the blockchain level randomization. So that technically we don't know who would... So a transaction is randomly allocated to a consensus code range and a consensus code range is randomly allocated to the validators. Double spending um, is one of the attacks possible in blockchain, so I'll just explain uh, how it works uh, here. Technically, three chain is for IoT where double spending isn't that much a major issue, but um, three chain will prote protect against that. Uh, I mean, basically, the validator of a transaction, so the transaction output, as I said, we have two levels of randomization, so even if a node is controlling a, a, a CCR, it cannot guarantee there's no guarantee that this transaction will fall within that CCR uh, but also assume that these are transaction A, B and C so and then this is the hash of the transaction um, so if transaction B and C are spending the output of transaction A the validator corresponding to C will send the transaction to A saying okay sign this transaction uh, when A signs uh, A will check uh, if it previously um, see that transaction has the output has been spent or not and if not it will sign the transaction so if B now checks again then again A will check and will say no the transaction has already been spent so that means only one a transaction output can only be spent once even uh, if this A is malicious here and uh, signs both these transactions uh, all, the transaction will be broadcast to the network everyone will detect that and technically, the beauty of Tree Chain is that um, all the nodes will know who will be responsible for that and who to blame because uh, for sure A acts maliciously in this case. So a bit of the output and results, we implemented this and using Java and uh, Raspberry Pi devices uh, to show uh, the applicability of Tree Chain on uh, sort of uh, low resource available devices. And as you can see, the uh, per transaction processing time is quite low and the cumulative processing time for managing the transactions uh, where the transaction rate increases is also quite low which in which in which um, sort of assures that the transaction throughput of uh, tree chain can be very high also we have evaluated uh, retrieval and um, the time to retrieve a transaction from uh, tree chain Technically, in the conventional uh, blockchains, all the transactions are stored in a, in, a, in a single ledger. And then if you want to uh, find the transaction, you have to go through uh, all the blocks in the ledger. While in three chain, technically, depending on the, how many validators we have, that overhead will be reduced because um, the blockchain and the blocks are distributed among uh, different nodes. So when you want to search for a transaction, you know where to search and which of the ledgers you have to search. And that will re significantly reduce the transaction retrieval time. Okay, so that's uh, to rechain. Thanks for your attention. And if you have any question, we'll be happy to answer.